After your second week of this introduction to fecal sludge management, do you feel like you already have a grasp on fundamentals? Are you ready to move on to treatment technologies now? You now know the four treatment objectives we will focus on in this course, solid liquid separation, stabilization, nutrient management, and pathogen reduction. How do they relate to health and environmental impacts and the physical, chemical, and biological mechanisms for how they are achieved? Developing an understanding of treatment mechanisms is very important as it is a basis for applying existing fecal sludge treatment technologies, developing new ones, and adapting existing ones from wastewater and sludge treatment practices. We will start exploring examples in more detail next week with established treatment technologies that rely on physical mechanisms such as gravity, filt filtration, and evaporation, biological metabolism applied for stabilization, nutrient management and pathogen reduction, mechanisms of pathogen reduction, and chemical treatment. The number one goal of fecal sludge management is always public health, but also related and important are environmental health and resource recovery. You now know multiple ways in which treatment products can be used for resource recovery, which ones are at different levels of established, innovative, or in development, and ways in which they can be used. Designing for the final end use or disposal option of treatment products is critical to ensure that effluents and end products achieve adequate and appropriate levels of treatment, that systems are not over-designed, wasting financial resources, and that systems are not under-designed, risking public and environmental health. In addition to setting treatment objectives, resource recovery can offset treatment costs and help ensure sustainable operation of treatment plants. In many cities, treatment does not yet exist, and hence treatment products also do not yet exist. So how can you determine potential markets for something that doesn't exist yet? This is why you learned about the concept of replacement or surrogate products that have an equivalent resource value and can be used as proxies to explore markets. Were you able to download and review the guidelines for the implementation of the market-driven approach? We used the example of Kampala. Have you thought about which treatment products have the greatest market attractiveness in your city? Please add your comments in the discussion forum. You also learned about the importance of designing management options for the actual quantity and characteristics of fecal sludge based on the local context. Without reasonable estimations, you cannot accurately design a management plan. You also learned about the different places in the service chain where characteristics and quantities can be assessed to evaluate current and future demands for management needs to help ensure long-term sustainable management. You know what parameters of characterization are, can select relevant parameters depending on the management question, such as treatment objectives, type of end use, or collection, and name important characteristics of treatment products for resource recovery, including irrigation, soil conditioner, compost, fertilizer, solid fuel, liquid fuels, animal feed. Were you able to download Sondek or PRG resources? Also in week two, you learned about manual and mechanical ways in which fecal sludge is collected and transported from containment to treatment, why urban areas rely on a range of technologies and which are appropriate based on the context. In week five, we will visit this in more depth with two more modules, one on collection and another one on transport. Based on week two, what ideas do you have now for implementation of fecal sludge management in your city? Ideas for resource recovery? How would you attempt to quantify fecal sludge? Please share your ideas on the discussion forum. Please also visit the platform website for a complete list of additional resources. So now we're ready to move on to week three, where you will learn about treatment technologies for the centralized to semi-centralized treatment of fecal sludge. The week will start out with an overview of technologies based on their level of development, whether they are established, transferring from other technologies, 
or innovative in development and an overview of their different treatment objectives and how they need to be linked together to achieve overall objectives. When thinking about treatment objectives, keep in mind how they relate to different types of resource recovery. We will present a number of established technologies, and for each one you will learn about the treatment process, important operation and maintenance requirements, and design parameters. The week will then wrap up with an example of how a number of technologies can be, can be combined in the design of a treatment plant. Treatment technologies will again be covered in more detail in week five. Thanks for joining. See you next week.